Hey, welcome to the Insurance Buzz. My name is Michael Weaver and I am your host and I am excited today to share with you the five step sales process to make six figures in insurance sales. And this is going to be a five part series. So this is going to be part one where I break down the very first part of the sales process and that is going to be your elevator pitch. All right. How can you get more prospects interested in having a conversation with you so that you can do what you do best and help them out. That's exactly what today's episode is going to be about. So let's get into this. First and foremost, let me just cover some basics. When you are making calls, you need to be intentional with what you are doing, meaning no cell phone, no email, no distractions. When you're making calls to prospects, you have to be ready. You have to be on top of your game. You got to be ready to go. When that prospect answers the phone, you got to be ready to do your thing and take action. There can't be any hesitation. There can't be any, uh, no mumbling and bubbling, baby. Like it's time to do what you do best. So That is the basics. To be successful in prospecting, you have to be intentional with what you are doing. You got to be ready to take advantage of when that prospect answers the phone, you are ready to go. You're ready to take action. So let's get into it. An elevator pitch is made of these things. Number one, who you are, what you're calling for, why someone should stay on the phone with you. So your big, bold statement, and then always assuming the conversation, always assuming the quote. So let's break these four bullet points down real fast. Who are you? Who are you? What's your name? What's your name? What insurance organization do you represent? That is the very first part. So, hey, this is Michael Weaver from XYZ Insurance Company. All right, number two, what are you calling for? What are you calling about? All right. So number one, auto insurance, home insurance, life insurance. Why are you calling this prospect? All right. So, hey, this is Michael Weaver from XYZ Insurance Company giving you a call on your auto and home insurance. Next, we have the big, bold statement. This is your why. All right. Why should someone stay on the phone with you? You've got roughly eight to 15 seconds to grab somebody's attention. All right. So you don't have a long time. Your elevator pitch needs to be short, sweet, to the point. All right. So you've clearly stated who you are. You've clearly stated what you're calling for. Now, what is your big, bold statement? Maybe you've helped the last nine out of 10 people in the area. Maybe, hey, your insurance rates just went up. Your insurance rates just went up. I'm going to provide you with a, a free quote today. All right. What is going to catch their attention? That is your big, bold statement. Maybe you were voted number one in customer experience in your area. I have no idea. This needs to be you, your personal brand, not the big company that you represent or companies that you represent. This is what can you do for the customer today? What is going to spark their attention and getting a quote from you? And look, if you say save money, look, I got no beef with that. But this is the only time you're ever going to talk about saving money. Your job is not to save somebody money. Your job is to make sure they're adequately protected on their worst day. So if you bring up saving money in the elevator pitch, look, I got no beef with that. You have to say something to hook them into having a conversation with you. But this is the only time that saving money should ever get brought up in the conversation. The rest of it is all about education. The rest of it is about making sure your customer is adequately protected. All right. That's going to be a later part series, though. I'm telling you how to do that. So we've got who you are, what you're calling for, why someone should stay on the phone with you, and now the importance of assuming the conversation. You're never going to say who you are, what you're calling for, your big, bold statement, and ask someone, hey, so you interested in getting a quote today? Hey, what do you think? Never eliminate that from your vocabulary. When you say who you are, what you're calling for, why someone should stay on the phone with you, how you can help them, you're going to automatically assume that conversation. The My favorite way to assume the conversation is by simply saying, hey, so is your address still 123 Main Street? Or hey, I've got your 2020 Ford and your 2019 Chevy on file. Are those still the two cars you drive? All right. 
I always like the address. I always went the, with the address because I'm going for that yes. So I'm gonna say who I am, what I'm calling for, the big bold statement, and hey, let's go ahead and get this going. Is your address still 123 Main Street? I'm going for that immediate yes, all right? And once I get that immediate yes, then I'm going to go into the next step of the five part series, which I'll cover on the next episode, which is rapport building. All right. Now, if you want this done for you, this is exactly what we do at Weaver Sales Academy with our defined training plans. So if it makes sense to talk, you want this done for you, training already done for you, so you don't have to put this together, let's have a conversation. Other than that, when structuring your elevator pitch, again, who are you? What are you calling for? Why should someone stay on the phone with you? And always, always, always assume the quote, assume the conversation, assume that they want to have a conversation with you. Look, your whole concept of making this call is to help a customer out and close the business. So you have to keep the end in mind. And with the end in mind, they have to have a conversation with you. So you're not going to ask them if they want to have a conversation with you. You're going to assume that they want to have a conversation with you. And I'm hitting this a lot because I hope that you take this away. The better you get at assuming the conversation, the better you get at assuming the quote and just bringing the customer along on the journey, the more success you are going to have in turning those conversations, those contacts that you're doing into conversations with the customer that convert into closes. All right, so always assume the quote, always assume the conversation. So other than that, as always, I appreciate you. If today's episode helped, I'd love you. I'd love for you to text me, 816-727-7610. Other than that, as always, time and attention are by far our most important assets. Appreciate you spending time with me today. Go out and make it great. <laughs> <laughs>